Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to St. Henry Catholic Church, to our humble chapel in the fireside room during this uh, COVID time. Uh, my name is Father Charles Zock, and Deacon Larry will be the gospel and proclaim the gospel. And um, Patty is our cantor, and uh, Peggy will be our lecturer. So we stand and welcome the Lord present with the song, Let Heaven Rejoice. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad. Let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land, Hosanna to our King. Sound the trumpet into the night, the day of the Lord is here. celebrate the feast of St. Bridget. So today I've chosen both Bridgets of the 13th and 14th century. Bridget of Sweden and Bridget of Ireland. So it's your choice. One was a mother and eventually became a mystic and the one in Ireland was uh, an abbess and a religious. So let's call upon both Bridgets to intercede for us before the throne of God so that we can live out what God has called us to be, the best version of what God created. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who guided St. Bridget of Sweden and St. Bridget of Ireland along different paths of life and wondrously taught them the wisdom of the cross as they contemplated the passion, death, and resurrection of your Son, Grant us, we pray, that walking worthily in our vocation, we may seek you in all things, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, through the law, I died in the law, that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. No longer I, but Christ lives in me. Insofar as I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved me and given himself for me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. I will bless the Lord at all times. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. I will bless, bless the, the Lord at all times. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one calls, 
believe stories and we don't know who to believe because our news media has gotten to the point where it's like sensationalism. When I grew up, and I think everybody in this room can relate, I watched Walter Cronkite. And when Walter Cronkite said something, it was gospel. But now you watch something and go, oh, you know, I don't know if I can trust that or not. I end up doing a lot of reading trying to find out if what I'm seeing is actually true, was it taken out of context, and, and so forth. What we can bank on, if you want to make this a gospel of prosperity, what we can bank on is the truth that comes from the gospels, the truth that comes from the Bible. It's been here for a long time, and it's still helping those of us that want to seek the knowledge. And so when I was a kid, there was a movie, The Greatest Story Ever Told. It became probably the, you know, a memorable movie for me, one of my favorites. And I wonder, why did they call it the greatest story ever told? You know, I was eight years old when I first saw it. And now I understand. I've understood for a while. But now I understand. The Bible is the greatest story ever told because it's truth. These parables are truth. And if we seek the wisdom of them, we expand our knowledge to be able to help others. If we just push the Bible aside and we push our spirituality aside and start depending on a political movement or money, whatever, we're not going to get very far. But we keep the Bible in the forefront. That's where our gold is. That's where our treasure is. And the more we read, the better we understand. And so my task for you, instead of watching news, and I'm as guilty as the next person. It's like a train wreck. I just have to see it. But I'm trying to get myself away from it. My task for you today is to pull out the Bible, pick one of the parables, and just sit with it for a while and read it and see what comes to you because it truly is the greatest story. Let us stand as we make these petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray for the church, for the people of God, that includes us, that we be a living parable, a living story of what it means to be the kingdom of God, reflecting justice, peace, and truth. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for our society that it lives peace, justice, and truth by civility and respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord this past week, we started our construction phase. The roofers are now completely redoing the roof on the church and the office area. So let's pray for the success of the construction for safety for the workers, especially those on the roof this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and we add our own intentions in the silence of our heart. We make these our prayers in confidence to a loving and caring God through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God, forever. Through this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. 
This will become our spiritual drink. Let us be our Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the Holy Church. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, in commemoration of Blessed Bridget of Sweden and Ireland, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. You are indeed holy, O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal